Hi, my name is Padina and I work at the History House in Armidale. And today's little video clip is coming to you from the oldest school building in Armidale. This school building that we're videoing from today was built in 1900 and it got shifted across to this historical precinct in Minnawarra Park in the 1980s. Today I want to talk to you a little bit about some of the games that the children played probably in the time when this school building was first built in the early 1900s and also a little bit later. Some of these games are known to be around or have been around since the ancient Egyptian times and one of those games is marbles. Back then the marbles weren't made from glass like the marbles are today. They weren't made from glass until the 1930s. They were made from clay or a marble stone instead. Um, but today I'm going to show you how, um, how to play marbles with these glass marbles here. Now, there's a lot of different ways that you can play marbles. I'm just going to show you one way. You can talk to your parents and your grandparents and, and do some research for yourself to find out all the different ways of playing. But this one way of playing is you will need some marbles, the small ones. I also have a tombola and a shooter, which are slightly larger marbles that I'm going to use to shoot my small marbles out of the ring that I have here. So if you play with some friends, you will need to agree at the beginning of the game how many of your small marbles you're going to put in your ring there. I've made my ring out of masking tape, you can do it out of string, or maybe if you're playing outside you can draw it with some chalk. Um, whatever you like, just so long as you've got a circle, decide how many marbles you're going to put into that circle to start with. Now these marbles are going to be the ones that are going to be shot out of the circle using your shooter or your tombola. Alright, you should be around about 2 metres back from that circle. I don't have quite 2 metres of room here today so I'll be around about a metre away down here at the other end of the mat. I will then thumb these marbles into the ring and try and knock those other marbles out. If I knock them out, I either get to keep them or I get to count them up as my points and then at the end of the game, all the marbles go back to the people who they originally belonged to. All right, so just pop the marble in your hand and try and flick it across. That one totally didn't work. Flick it into the circle of the mat. And all the marbles that flicked out of the circle now become the points that I receive. I can then go back and collect my tombola and my shooter and it's the next person's go to try and flick more marbles out of the circle. And then when they're all out, we count up your points and see who won the game. So that's a simple version of how to play marbles. Lots and lots of versions of that game. Another game I want to show you is called Knuckle Bones. Now Knuckle Bones is not quite as old a game as Marbles is, but Knuckle Bones interestingly used to be played with actual Knuckle Bones from sheep or goats. These Knuckle Bones that I have here are the ankle bones of sheep. So in the early 1900s, the whole Armadale area was full of farms, so the children would probably ask the parents, after the animals were slaughtered, for the ankle bones of the sheep, they boil with them, um, bleach them in the sun to clean all the meat off them, and then they would look like this, and they could use them for a knuckle bones game. These are pretty hard to come by nowadays, but it's easy to find the plastic ones in a lot of shops still. Um, it's also called jacks. All right, again, with knuckle bones, quite a few different versions of how you can play this game. And I'm just going to show you two simple versions of knuckle bones. The first one is just simply practicing the skill of catching and flicking, that, that dexterity of your hand, flipping your hand around. And it's, if you practice that skill, then you can start playing some of the more complicated games. So all you do is you've, you have five knuckle bones in your hand, you flick them and you try and catch as many as you can on the back of your hand, and then back up and catch, and however many you've caught in your hand, you get five points per knuckle bone that you've caught. So I've caught two, 
I'd get 10 points. And then it's the next person's turn. And you go around the circle with your friends and whoever gets to 51st is the winner of the game. So that's just simply practicing the basic catch and throw skill with knuckle bones. I'm going to flip over and use my plastic knuckle bones for this second example of the game because they're a bit smaller and easier to play with. This second one is called dumps. I will dump my knuckle bones down onto the ground like this. Now I have to choose a jack. I'm just going to choose yellow because that's my favourite colour. But you can choose whichever knuckle bone is on the ground there that you like. The first round of this game, there's four rounds. The first round, you need to pick up one knuckle bone at a time without dropping the jack. You throw up the jack, pick up one knuckle bone and catch the jack like this. You have to do that for all of the knuckle bones on the ground. And if you can do that successfully without dropping your jack, you finish that round. Then you do the second round. Grab your jack. Now, instead of picking up one knuckle bone, you have to pick up two knuckle bones. Let's see if I can do this. Like that. So I've got two knuckle bones and the other two, and I missed that one. That would be round two if I did that successfully. Round three, you've probably guessed already, you have to pick up three knuckle bones. And on round four, you try and pick up all four of the knuckle bones without dropping your jack, which is quite tricky because they can easily bounce out of your hand like that. As you're going around the circle, if you miss your turn, like that time I, I missed, and on the number two I missed, I would have to redo that one the next time around. And then when you, the first person to finish all four rounds wins the knuckle bone game. Once again, a lot of different versions of this game. Find out, do some research yourself, find out from your grandparents or parents if they remember playing it. And have a go at the catch and flick skill of knuckle bones. The third game I want to talk to you a little bit about is called Coits. Coits is a game that's probably been around for about 1500 years. And it was a very common game that was played by people that were on ships, so the migrants that came over to Australia or the sailors on the ships because on ships there was almost always some extra rope lying around that they could make these rope rings with. So to play coits you need a hop or a stick like this, it doesn't have to look like this, you can just grab a stick and, and whack it down into the ground or if you want to play inside you could probably get a wooden spoon and just stick it up between some objects and make some coits out of cardboard or something. They don't have to be rope rings. In fact, the first settlers, when they came to Australia, they would often play this game with horseshoes and throw those over a stake that was in the ground. But I've got a set of five coits here and, and a wooden hob here. So you will need that. I'm going to pop the hob over at that end of the mat. Again, I should be closer to two or three meters away from the hob to play this game, uh, but I haven't got the, all of that room, so I'm just gonna do it from about a meter away. With these five rings, or coits, I'm going to need to throw them, toss them, and try and get them to land over that hob. If I get all five of them on there, I get five points, and I get to pick them all up and, and keep on going with my turn. If I don't, if I miss one, I get to finish my hand and then it's the next person's turn and I only get as many points as the amount of coits that have landed on that hole. So I'm just going to do like a gentle little throw, a little toss, whoa that was close, yes, and try and get all of them to land on the hob like that. So in this round I get two points. Um, and then we collect the coins and it will be the next person's turn to play this round. The last game I want to explain to you for this little video clip is called Hopscotch. Now this is still a very common game. I've seen it in quite a few different schoolyards. So hopefully you're familiar with this. I'm just going to briefly explain a little bit about how you can play it. Apparently this game was invented by the Romans and the Roman soldiers needed to go through a hopscotch core that was a whole lot longer than this one and they had to do it fully kitted in all of their armour and packs to 
Just imagine how strong and how good their balance must have been if they could hop through a court completely with all of their armour on. What you'll need for this game is obviously a hopscotch court like something like this one. This is one of the most common types of courts with numbers 1 to 8 in this sequence. But you can do whatever order you like and make it as long as you want. All that you will need to make sure of is that it's in series of single squares or double squares like we've got here. Um, and then you can make it in whatever kind of pattern you want. You will also need a marker. I'm using a little button today. But you could use anything. Um, you could potentially use stones or pieces of wood or stick, so long as your marker is not something like a ball, which will roll or slide easily because you need it to land in your square. Okay? So, just to start with, to practice your footwork a little bit, to go through the court, you just simply hop on the single squares and jump on the double squares. So like this, hop, 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 jump, hop, jump, and then spin, and hop, jump, hop, 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 back. So that would be one round. The tricky bit now is though, you've got to use your marker to make your way through the court to win the game. The first part is really easy. You will just simply put or drop your marker into the first square. Now, because my marker is in number one, that square is out of bounds. I'm not allowed to touch that square. I have to hop over it. So, over, hop, hop, spin. And then, on the way back, I need to stop, balance. This foot is not allowed to touch the ground, but I have to lean over, pick up my marker, now this square is safe, whoa, nearly fell, and I can finish the court like normal. If I did fall, I would lose my turn. If I touch the square with the marker in, I would lose my turn. Or if I touch any of the lines on the outside, I would lose my turn. I'd have to go to the back of the line and it would be the next person's turn. So the first bit is a little bit easy because it's not too hard to throw your button or your marker into the square. When you get to six, seven, eight, it's a bit harder. See, that should have gone into six. Because it didn't land in the sixth square properly, I would actually lose my turn. Let's pretend that it's in six. Now I have to skip six. Jump, spin, pick up my marker, six is safe and I would have finished that round and I'd get to go to number seven. So hopscotch is a really good game for your balance and throwing skills to perfect all of those skills. You don't have to make it out of masking tape like I've done. I did that because I needed to do it inside. It's better to play it outside with like a little stone. If you're outside and you've got concrete, see if you can find some chalk to draw it, use a, um, a pen or a pencil or a crayon maybe if you're allowed to. If you have a dirt driveway, just get a stick and scratch it into the dirt driveway and you can play. So this is a game that's really easy to play wherever you are. Have a go. Okay, so they're the four games that I wanted to show you in detail, but don't think that they're the only games that were played in the olden days. There are so many different games that were played. Some of the games were made up. Children needed to use their imagination, just use whatever they could find around them to play games. I'll quickly give you a couple of ideas. I won't explain these games, but a couple of other ideas. Hoops were quite popular, especially in the 1950s. Um, you could use hoops like a skipping rope and you could skip with them. You can use hoops for like balancing type games and try and get it to roll back to you. Um, you can use it as a proper hula hoop and see if you can spin it around your body. So hoops were pretty popular. Skipping ropes, same thing. So you can skip with these. All you need is a little bit of energy and the willingness to try doing some skipping. You need a bit of coordination. Just do simple skipping, lots of different types of skipping that you could do though. Really good for fitness and apparently skipping became very, very popular. As the Dutch migrated through the world, they would take this game with them. If you don't have a skipping rope, find any kind of rope. Apparently washing line works really well to skip with. So the skipping, sack race, 
Hopefully you've heard of sack race. If you don't have a Hessian sack like this one, that's okay. You can either go um, and see if you can find a potato sack or go to a coffee shop that still sells coffee beans or roast their own coffee beans. Or you can make your own just with a bit of material, sew up the edges and make your own sack. This one's actually a little bit too small for my size, but you will get into the sack like this and then in a relay or um, in a race, you would all hop in the sack like that and try and get through the core first. So you have to be very good at jumping skills. Sack race, stilts. I know you can buy very fancy stilts these days, but of course that wasn't always available in the olden days. So the kids would collect old tins like this. You can do the same. Maybe ask your mum or your dad if they can put a hole in the side that you can tie the rope into like this. And then, all you would do is simply stand on that, holding the piece of rope and then seeing how far you can walk and what kind of skills you can do standing on top of the can. So there's a very simple form of stilts. The last one I like to talk about is egg and spoon race. This game can be done as a race or as a relay. If it's done as a race, everybody will be in a line with the egg and the spoon. The important thing is your other hand, you're not allowed to touch the spoon or the egg ever. And you have to run balancing the egg on the spoon like this. The first one to get to the end is the winner. If you do it as a relay, the person in your team on the other side also has a spoon and you need to, when you get to the other side, carefully tip the egg into their spoon and then they need to run. So it's done as a relay. So you can see that there were heaps of really inventive games. Do a bit more research about them. Talk to your parents, your grandparents about some of these games and go outside and just give it a go. Lots and lots of fun to be had. Thank you for watching and hopefully one day I'll see you over at Minnawarra Park at the History House.